Hi, my name is Pitar, and today I'm going to show you how to make homemade bread. It's actually very simple to do. Um, you only really need four basic ingredients and water. So, first, obviously, flour. This is some wheat flour. I'm just putting here for example. I'm not going to use this today, but sometimes if you want, you can mix some of this in with the regular flour if you want to make whole wheat bread or use this in entirely. Um, you need about one and a half to two cups of flour for one baguette. So, we're going to use this. Um, cane sugar. You just need a little bit of sugar, not this entire packet, but just putting it here because that's one of the ingredients. Salt, you need about a tablespoon of salt. And then yeast. I usually buy a lot of yeast and I put it in a mason jar so it stays kept. You can buy little packets of it in the store. Um, if you plan on making bread a lot, it's definitely good to do this. So you can just buy it in bulk and it's a lot cheaper. And it keeps for about a year. And you also need to put the yeast in a little glass like this. So any 12 to 16 ounce glass will do. I usually use a pint glass. Works well for me. Okay, so first step, get your water running. Try to get it warm. You don't want it to be hot. You don't want it to be cold. So I usually turn the water on to let it warm up, but take, I can get that later. So take the yeast, I know I said a tablespoon, I mean, you can measure it if you want. I usually just do roughly whatever a tablespoon is. Put that in the pint glass. Take the sugar. Just a little bit of sugar. Maybe like that much, you know, you want to put a little more, make the bread sweeter, you can, but you really don't need to. Very, very small amount. So, once you have that, make sure your water is warm. Make sure it's not too hot. Turn it down a little bit. And you want to fill the glass up about halfway. While you're filling it, you stir it. It's a little low. Stir it up real good. And then just set that over in a corner somewhere. You gotta let it rise for 20 to 30 minutes. I usually just set a timer on the kitchen for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and let that rise and then we'll come back and go to the next step. Okay, so the next step, if I'm making the bread, you can see over here, uh, the yeast has risen. So that's what will happen to it after you let it sit. If you wanna sit here and let it rise for another 20 minutes, you can and make it extra fluffy, but this should be plenty for what we need to do. So what we're gonna do now, the flour. I said one to two cups before. Um, if you're making more than one loaf of bread, you obviously wanna put more than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put just about one and a half, a little bit more doesn't need to be exact, it's not a big deal. And then, take the salt, about a tablespoon of salt. You can put a little bit less than a tablespoon if you're only doing two cups of flour. If you put a little more, it'll be a little saltier. Um, doesn't matter, depends on what, what taste you like. You can experiment with it a little bit to see what tastes good for you. So mix that around a bit. Create a little, little valley here for the, for the yeast. Not really supposed to splatter the flour like I did just there, but you know, whatever, I'll clean it up later. So, just take this, dump it in here, start mixing that. So turn your warm water back on, and then take your glass and just fill that up. That's what you're gonna have to do here. When you start mixing this, as you can see, it's still pretty dusty. So, to make this a consistent dough, you have to continue to add water until it becomes solid. Put a little more in there. Start mixing away. And Just keep, keep messing with it. 
This, just starting out bread making, this is probably the most difficult part because it's a little, takes a little bit of precision to know when you've added enough water. If you don't add enough water, it's gonna be too dry. You're gonna end up with bread that's hard as a rock. Uh, if it's too wet, your dough is gonna be really sticky and just kind of hard to work with and make into a solid loaf. So just take your time, figure it out. The good thing is if you put too much water, you can just take a little bit of flour and add it back in to bring it back to the right consistency. So you just gotta find that balance. All right, so you see I've made a mostly consistent ball of dough here. It's a, a little bit moist, but that's okay. Just put a little bit of flour in it. So on a working surface here, I'm gonna sprinkle some flour. I don't know if I said this at the beginning of the video, but this is a very messy job. The fix and clean it afterwards. You're just gonna roll this around in here. Kind of mash it together. Try to get into a consistent ball. The purpose of this is just to kind of consolidate everything. So you have a nice consistent dough and it doesn't have big lumps in it. So you just gotta go at it for a little while. Put some muscle into it. You know, use your whole body weight to roll the whole thing out and it'll go much smoother for you. Okay, so made a mostly consistent ball here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's not an exact science. If you want to sit here and mess around with it till you get a perfect sphere, feel free. But uh, it's really not necessary. It just needs to be, for the most part, solid and consistent, free of very large lumps, kind of like that. So after that's done, you take this bowl that you were using, just kind of wipe out the excess flour that's in there. Put this to the side. I did forget to mention one thing. This is where the olive oil comes in. Let me grab that. So you want to put your ball in here. Put a tiny little bit of olive oil on it, not too much. Spread that around the top. Yeah, just kind of coat it, coat it in the olive oil, real nice. Set that back there. And now what we're gonna do is play the waiting game. We're gonna take a rag, and you're gonna cover it, set this aside, and set a timer for 40 minutes, and just let that rise. And then we'll be back after that. All right, so we waited 40 minutes the bread kind of fluff up a little bit, or the dough rather. So now, I'm gonna sit here and mash it up a little more and this, it's a lot softer now. So we let it get fluffy. Just kind of beat it up a little bit. Make sure it's consistent. So, now we're gonna do is form the bread. So, I didn't say this earlier, but you actually have two options here. If you're making a baguette, it's highly recommended you use this baguette pan. Actually, I don't know any other way you'd be able to get the shape that you want, but you can make up three breads here. We're just gonna do one, but this is very good as it cooks it nicely. And one thing about this, you don't put water on it, you don't wash it, you literally just wipe it off after it's done and put it away. Um, you just go to Amazon and type in bread making pan and you'll find you know, all sorts of these up there. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but that works. If you want to make just like a square loaf of bread, you can use something like this and you can literally just take the dough and kind of round it out a little bit and just set it in there. Um, I just put that out so I could show you, but I'm going to be using this one. I'll put this one aside. So I'll take the bread. It's kind of mashed up. Just want to kind of roll it out. You know, shape out your bread. Make 
make sure you get it fairly even because you don't want to want it to cook evenly. for maybe, I don't know, let's do 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes or so, it depends. You want it to kind of fill out a little bit inside the pan. So we'll cover it again and I'll set the timer and we'll come back in 25 minutes. Okay, so we let the bread sit for about 25 minutes here. Now, I guess I forgot to mention this earlier, but usually I let it sit for 25 minutes. And then after it's been sitting for 25 minutes, I hit the oven to preheat to 400 degrees. And then that'll obviously be a little bit more time it's rising. So it ends up working out to about 30 or 35 overall. That's just, the timing works out that way. And then one last thing to get it ready for the oven. What you wanna do is you cut these little slits in the top of it like this. Not too deep, just a little something to give it that, that texture. Um, for those of you that are in construction, just think of this as kind of expansion joints. So when the bread starts expanding, it doesn't just start cracking all over the place. It'll try to crack here. Now, I haven't had massive success with this. It usually cracks a little bit along the middle anyway, but this will at least keep it from just splitting all over the place. So we'll wait till this preheats. I'll pop it in the oven. Because this is only one piece of bread, I'm gonna bake it for 28 minutes. If you were doing three baguettes here, you'd want to cook it for about 36. Um, I know that sounds funky. I mean, you can round it up to 35 or 30. Um, I just like multiples of four. That's why I do that. So we'll stick it in the oven and then I'll show you the finished product once it comes out. All right, it's done. Yeah, look at that beautiful bread. All right, so now, you don't want to cut it immediately. Just wrap it up in a rag. Let it cool off. Want to let it cool off a little bit. It doesn't have to be room temperature, but um, you don't want to cut it immediately because then it dries out the bread sooner. So we'll let it dry for like 15 minutes and then cut it while it's still warm because warm bread tastes really good. So we'll be back. Alright, so now we've let it sit for a little bit. It's still warm, but we've let it kind of settle in. Now it's the best time to eat the bread. It's still warm, freshly baked. It tastes really good. I highly recommend you get you know, a serrated bread knife like this. Um, you can find them pretty cheap on Amazon actually. It's surprising that uh, they're not more expensive. Cut a little couple pieces here. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Nice solid bread. Take a little bit of the pepper jack that I have and enjoy it.